And so this is a great thing. He is telling you what they knew. You know, what Al-Habib al Hassan ibn Salih, Aydarus, says in Jifri. Do you think this was something that Umar ibn al-Khattab didn't know? The man who says that if I lost a camel's halter, I could find it in the Qur'an. Where's the verse about the camel halter? Where is that? It's not there. There's no camel halter in the Qur'an. And every single camel halter is in the Qur'an. Because the Qur'an is the uncreated, infinite speech of the Lord. Therefore, everything known in the knowledge of God, which is also camel halters, God knows of every camel halter and every camel. You know, that's in his knowledge. His knowledge manifests, yakshif, and his speech points, yadun. So everything in the knowledge of God is in the Qur'an, even you and your story. Except that you'd have to read it between the lines, between the lines, between the lines. But it is there. Because every word in the Qur'an is connected to a reality in God's creation that opens up on the tablet of light of all things that will be and all things that have ever been. It's all there in that book, contained in those letters. And this is something we study about in theology. But it's all there. In the Qur'an, it's like, you know, um, if you had a beautiful lake on a mountaintop and in the summertime, and the sky is filled with stars, you know, which are millions and millions of light years apart, but they're all there in the lake. And the lake is just from here to there, or the pond. But I can see the Milky Way, I can see all the planets, all of the stars, the shooting stars. I can see them in the lake top, you know, on the summer night on the top of the mountain. And they're not inside that. And that's the way the Qur'an is too. That everything is in there. How and you, may you, someday you will see that. May it be in this world. The most beautiful thing you ever heard which gave you knowledge of beauty, knowledge of majesty, knowledge of good, knowledge of evil, that made you be stimulated when you hear the drum and you hear the nasheed and the beautiful sounds. What was that? Alastu bi rabbikum. When God gathered us all together on the plain of Arafat, where we make pilgrimage, and he, out of the loins of our Blessed Father, Adam, we were only this big, only this big. And he manifested himself to us, and he said, Am I not your Lord? Not your Lord, who commands you, do this, and prohibits you, do not do this. That's what the Lord does. The Lord commands, and the Lord prohibits. The Lord also guides. The Lord also brings you up stage by stage. But ultimately, the Lord is the one who says, do this, do not do that. That's why you don't take your ego as a Lord. When your ego says, no, do this, don't do that. So who is your Lord? Your ego or the Lord of the worlds? Okay, but he said, alastu bi rabbikum. Am I not your Lord? Meaning that you already know that. You already knew that. And then we all said, bala, bala, of course not knowing what was to come, not knowing what was in store, that 